What's good everyone, so I have watched Furiosa, a film I've been eagerly anticipating this year. Fury Road ranks high among my favourite modern movies, I was blown away by its achievements. With Furiosa serving as a prequel, focusing on such a great character, and potentially expanding the Mad Max universe further, I had high hopes for George Miller's latest venture. So if you're wondering whether Furiosa deserves a spot on your watch list, Let's dive into my review. So this movie follows a young Furiosa as she is snatched from the green place of many mothers and falls into the hands of a great biker horde led by the warlord Dementus. Sweeping through the wasteland, they come across the citadel controlled by the immortal Joe. And while these two tyrants war for dominance, Furiosa must survive many trials as she puts together the means to find her way home. So guys, I had a lot of hype for this movie and for me, it didn't fully deliver with my expectations. The film storyline is where it falls short for me. I went in eagerly anticipating Furiosa's backstory, hoping to uncover the origins of the character from Fury Road. While the movie touches on certain aspects, it lacks conviction in its portrayal, leaving this movie feeling soulless. This emptiness permeates much of the film, making its two and a half hour runtime feel way longer. I found myself restless in my seat with the first 30 minutes dragging on like an eternity. It became evident that this might not be the film for me when I checked my watch thinking an hour had passed only to find that it had just been 30 minutes. While we do spend a significant amount of time with a younger Furiosa, her portrayal lacks depth beyond being shuffled between tribes. The first half of the movie fails to captivate and even when we transition to the adult Furiosa storyline portrayed by Anya Taylor-Joy, the narrative fails to offer any significant development, ultimately feeling like a rehash of what we've already seen in Fury Road. Now moving on to the characters and performances, they were commendable though they didn't leave a lasting impact on me as those in Fury Road. Alila Brown's portrayal of young Furiosa was particularly noteworthy. Despite limited dialogue, her emotive body language, especially through her expressive eyes, conveyed depth. Anya Taylor-Joy's depiction of the adult Furiosa was solid, allowing viewers to witness her character's evolution from timidity to confidence, aligning well with her portrayal in Fury Road. When we get to Chris Hemsworth, his portrayal of Dementus felt somewhat exaggerated. While there were moments of potential, his character lacked a consistent sense of menace, failing to keep me at the edge of my seat. Immortan Joe's appearance served as a reminder of the intensity that should have been maintained by his character. One standout character for me was Praetorian Jack. Now, despite his brief screen time, his performance actually stayed with me because he offered a compelling presence. I can actually see a spin-off movie or TV series centered around his character working because there was enough in this movie that I would like to see more of his character. Finally, let's touch on the CGI and cinematography which, surprisingly, fell short of expectations overall. Furiosa, in my opinion, didn't seem to push the boundaries as significantly as Fury Road did. While the action set pieces were visually appealing and some of the cinematography during the Dune scenes were commendable, certain green screen or LED wall sequences just felt slightly off. I watched this on an IMAX screen and I couldn't help but feel that the technological advancements from Fury Road weren't fully showcased in this movie. Overall, this movie left me feeling disappointed. While I didn't anticipate another Fury Road, I did expect Furiosa to delve deeper into the character and expand the Mad Max universe, which in my opinion, it failed to achieve. The film's excessive length, lack of emotion, and an ending that felt like a repetition of Fury Road contributed, in my opinion, to a dull viewing experience. Perhaps avid fans of the franchise well-versed in its lore may find more enjoyment than I did. However, personally, I'm let down. So with that said, I rate Furiosa a Lowry 2.5 out of 5 stars, and I suggest waiting for its streaming release. Thank you very much for watching this review. If you watched this movie, let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more movie, TV news and reviews. I also have my new live stream show called The Everything Lowry Show streaming once a week where I'll go through all of the entertainment news of the week. That's it for this video and until my next one guys, peace.